Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over week nine of the Circus Sports Million Contest. Um, it actually is an interesting week to start because we are starting the third quarter, and they pay off uh, 100000 for the winner of the next quarter. So it's a good little reset. And what we're trying to accomplish, once again, for those of you who are watching this for the first time, is we are trying to pick low-owned teams because this is not a contest to see who can beat the bookie, right? This is a contest to see who can beat everybody else. So if we can presume that uh, over the long run, these against the spread picks are going to be trending about 50%, all we really have to do in a situation like this is try to figure out who people are playing and go against them and to pick basically low-owned teams. And, you know, if it works out with the, that they win, that's that's really out of my control. Um, but this is a very useful exercise you know, to, number one, to try to win, and number two, to figure out how to approach uh, contests like this. And number three, it, 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 it teaches you to, I don't know, to gauge psychology of, of, of the masses and things like that and to understand what things people like to do in sports betting and otherwise. So we, we've come across a, a pretty good approach to getting low owned teams. We've done very, very well with this. Um, we, we try to find uh, teams that are just kind of like bad. Okay. Cause people like to play good teams for lack of a better description. People always like to play favorites. So in all else being equal, we'd like to take underdogs. People like to play home teams. So all else being equal, we'd like to take road teams. People like to play teams with spreads around those key numbers. So if it's a, uh, if, if it's a favorite laying only two and a half, people like to play that. They'd rather not have to lay the three and a half. And likewise, they'd rather lay the six and a half and they wouldn't rather lay the seven and a half. They are taking underdogs. They want to take the three and a half and they also want to take the seven and a half. Um, so these types of, of, of psychological profiles have led us to really pick some good low-owned teams. They haven't actually won, but whatever. That's really, we really can't control that. The one thing that we, I'm just still not 100% sure of is the whether to play the Thursday games or not. Because the Thursday games are always extremely low-owned. And one could argue, though, for good reason. Because if you play the Thursday game, then you have to actually pick the your entire pick selection for the whole week and what that will uh, it will shut you out of the possibility of profiting from big line value which could happen between now and sunday so there's a question of whether taking that low owned shot is worth giving up that possible uh line value um i still am of the belief that it's worth risking getting line value uh and you should be playing these thursday games so last week, I'll, I'll just re re recap what we did. I mean, we were awesome. I mean, we played the the uh, the Cardinals. Uh, they were the lowest owned Sunday team on the board. Now again, you have to dispense with this idea that that oh you lost. It was a bad pick. Okay, we were getting six to one odds just from the people playing the Browns. Okay, not to mention the 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 people that are playing all these other teams. So this was an elite play. Just happened to lose. Um, we also played the Bucks, and they were just kind of a kind of average. We played the Bears; they were the second lowest owned on the entire slate, and that's all we're. That's the only way that we can we can um, assess our skill in this is whether or not we've made low owned plays. And Thursday, we played one of these teams. I don't remember which one it was, but one of them. Either one would have would have sufficed to be a good low on team. Uh, we had to have taken the Titans because one thing we've also noticed there are some teams which are just inherently very popular. So the Steelers were very popular, and it was this perfect away plus two and a half. Okay, it's exactly what you wanted from a pick here. Um, okay, so let's move on. We are starting the new week, uh, the new quarter. And let's see if we can apply these types of concepts and come up with five uh, good contrarian plays. All right, let's go right down the list. This is literally the first time I'm looking at them. So the Bears tonight, we have to play something tonight. The Bears are three and a half 
They're home. Uh, people are going to want to play the Bears. Uh, well, people are not going to want to play this game at all. So we could probably play anybody here and be well within our rights. But I think we should probably play the Panthers because even though it's that three and a half points, the Bears are still looked at as kind of an okay team, even though they haven't been. And the Panthers are still looked at as kind of trash. So I do think that the Panthers are going to probably end up one of the lowest owned, if not the lowest owned team on the whole slate. So we're definitely going to play them. Patriots, two point favorites at home over the Colts. This is a pretty good one because people, number one, like to play the Patriots in general. They like to play home teams. They love to be just outside of that key number. So the Colts, oh, but the Patriots are actually plus two. Crap. So I don't think that the Patriots are going to be that high owned here because uh, if the, it's kind of hard to explain. If they were minus two, they'd probably have more <laughs> than if they were plus two. If anything, though, I would play the Colts. So we're going to put them in as a candidate play for now. Okay, Ravens minus six and a half against the Browns. Um, I mean, this is a perfect thing. You, know, you get And you have a couple of these in a row. You have these six and a half point road favorites, excuse me, road underdogs. They represent exactly the type of team that you want, you know, because you typically have the worst team and you have that team that's right on the end of that, of that key number. So either of these are probably good plays. So let's put these guys in here. Uh, okay, minus three is not going to work because we really don't want to have any pushes. When you're trying to beat so many people, uh, I know that a push counts for half a win, so it's really not much of a difference, but uh, I'm of the belief that pushes should be avoided uh, when you're trying to beat all these people. Um, Saints minus two and a half at Vikings. Um, that doesn't seem like much, if anything. Maybe I take a shot on the Vikings, but no, nah, we're not even going to put that as candidate play. Steelers, three Packers, push line. We don't want it. Bucks minus one at home against the Titans. Um, okay, the Titans might be okay. They're on the road. They're getting less than three. Uh, they still have that Will that Nellis, whatever his name is. I don't think anybody wants to play them. So we'll put the Titans in a uh, in that low owned, hopefully low owned uh, selection pool for now. Cardinals plus two. Now we've been doing a great job at streaming the Cardinals all year. Every single week, they are one of the three lowest owned teams on the whole board. The only thing that's getting in my way this week is now Kyler Murray is back, and I think that the Cardinals are going to probably take a little bit more money this week. They're also at home, and the Falcons are viewed as a pretty bad team, so it might be the end, for at least for at least one week, of us playing the Cardinals. Uh, okay, Lions, Chargers, three points. We don't want that. Cowboys minus 16 and a half over the Giants. I mean, this looks good to me. The Giants are just literally the worst. The Cowboys just stopped the Giants on the road. But at Giants, they beat them by like 40 last time they played. Uh, I can't see why this would be any different. So Giants plus 16 and a half certainly looks reasonable. Uh, ooh, it was another, another six and a half pointer. Seahawks, six and a half against the Commanders. Uh, so, yep, six and a half point road dogs. And Commanders, everybody hates. So we'll try that. Raiders, pick them Jets. Nothing really. Bill seven Broncos, nothing. So we have seven candidate plays. Now, if we wanted to, I mean, we could we could just play all the six and a half and be well, well within our rights. Which of the ones of these that that make me a little bit more squeamish? Um, I like all of these, honestly. Like the Bengals have been really hot. Uh, they only have to play six and a half. I think they're going to be popular. Browns, Browns might be no. I think I think that people are going to want to play the Ravens. Then again, the Browns have a really good defense, so maybe they'll avoid them. So maybe the Titans will keep the Titans. Maybe get rid of the Browns, and I think the Giants. Yeah, people, the people from New York, they're not playing the Giants with hell of it. So let's let's put these in. Let's put in the Commanders, the Panthers. Browns, Texans. So these are all definitely have to play the Thursday game. We'll play the Thursday dog. We'll play all six and a half point favorites and then underdogs on the road. And then it's between the Titans and the Giants. 
I think it's going to have to be the Titans. So I think the Giants are just going to – no one's really playing Dallas and laying 16 and a half. Maybe they are, though. Is anybody really playing the Bucks? This is a really tough decision between the Titans and the Giants. So we're gonna we're gonna deal with that the only way we know how, and that would be a coin flip. Um, you know, it's funny like in this day and age, nobody has any coins anymore. Um, do I even have a coin in my whole office? Yes, I do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this really, really scientific. We're gonna go. Heads, we're going to make uh, the Titans. Uh, oh, we forgot about the Colts. So it's either going to be Colts, Titans, or Giants. We can't flip them three times. How are we going to do this? We could do a random number generator. We got to be able to figure this out. Which is better? Colts, two-point favorite on the road? Are people really doing this? If we're really going to play that, you know what they might. You know what? When all else fails, we'll just play the. Oh, I was about to say we're going to play the Giants plus the 16 and a half. We're going to have a tournament. We're going to have a coin flip tournament between the Colts, the Titans, and the Giants. So first it's going to be Colts versus Titans. It's going to be a round robin. Heads will be Colts. Tails will be Titans. Colts win. So they're 1 0. Now it's Colts versus Giants. Colts again will be heads. And now it's tails. So the Colts have won. The Giants have won. And now it's going to be between the Titans and the Giants. Titans will be heads. Titans lost. Okay, so Titans are 0 and 2. Okay. Titans are 0 and 2. Now it's going to be between the Colts and the Giants. Colts will be heads. And it's the tails. So Colts and Giants are actually now tied because the Colts lost that one. So now Colts versus Giants for all the cheese. Colts will be heads. Giants will be tails. And it is the Colts. Can't be any better than that. So we have Panthers, Colts, Browns, Texans, and Commanders. Let's go. And that will do it. Uh, we will compare these picks to how low owned they are. And that's how we're going to judge our success. And hey, maybe it'd be even nice to get a win on these things. That'll do it. Good luck, everybody.